Hi everybody, thank you for pressing play on today's video. It's Caroline here from craftycarolinecreates.blogspot.co.uk. Today's project is this really very pretty little gift box. I'm really pleased actually with the way that it has turned out. And I've just noticed, and <laughs> coincidentally, that it coordinates perfectly with my nails. Didn't mean to do that, but wow, I like coincidences like that. So it um, has a lovely die cut butterfly on top, and then there's a sweet little window sheet behind so you get a little sneak of what's inside the box opens by untying the ribbon and then the lid just flips up like that I and mean, it's a really good space to put something special inside for that special person i think it's a a really lovely gift box um it would also work quite well you know just on on your desk like you could probably put like paper clips and things like that in just to make your desk a little bit more special Okay, I'll pop that to the side and we will show you how we made it. This one, um, before we do that, I'll just tell you the colours. I got so excited about my nails, I forgot. But the um, the cardstock is mint macaron and the ribbon is calypso coral. And this lovely paper is from the Pretty Petals DSP stack, which is a firm favourite of mine. Really good value and really useful and versatile. We are going to make the one today using Old Olive as our cardstock, so we'll use starting off with two pieces of cardstock. The first one, this wrap bit measures four inches by eight and a half inches, and then the base bit is just shy of eight inches square, so it measures, um, what will that be, seven and fifteen sixteenths of an inch in both dimensions. I'm going to start off with some scoring. Gonna do the, the largest square piece first. All of the dimensions, as always, are on my blog, which I link to below. So do pop over and see that there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna score it on all four sides exactly the same, and we're gonna score it at one inch and at two and a half inches. So one inch, one inch, two and a half inches, and then rotate it. 90 degrees and score it again at one inch, two and a half inches, and for the last time, oh, one inch and two and a half inches. Okay, just put that to one side for a second. Going to bring in our other piece. So this is the bit that measures eight inches by eight and a half inches by four inches. Scoring it with the longer side at the top, we're going to score it at three and a half inches and at five inches. Okay, we'll put those down on the table and move the scoreboard out of the way. We are then going to get a bone folder, which I seem to have forgotten. So you use your bone folder, I'm just going to use my fingers as I seem to have forgotten to bring it down. I'm just going to fold and pretend I'm burnishing all these score lines. My, um, my craft room is upstairs, but I film my videos in my kitchen because the lighting is, is much better. Um, so I have to remember to bring everything down and I seem to have forgotten the bone hold of it. Never mind. You will just get a, a much crisper result if you use your bone folder. Next thing we are going to do is do some cutting. So you may have seen me do these sort of reinforced boxes before. So just pick a corner and what we're going to do first is cut straight up across two of our score lines. That's one and two. Turn that round and then snip off both squares of that end and then just the bottom square of that end. Okay, And then we're going to notch off that flap that is left. There we go. And then these two end pieces we're also going to notch out very slightly. This all just helps with folding it up. So that's what you're left with on one corner. Move around to the next corner and do exactly the same. So straight up there, straight up there, cut off the whole of this end piece. And then just the bottom of that one there. Notch those out and a little notch on these two edges too, okay? Flip it round and we'll do exactly the same for the third time. Okay. 
notch, notch and notch there, <laughs> notch there. And then our last one. Now all this does is it just gives us a much sturdier box. Um, so it, and it also looks a little bit better as well because you're going to get a nice finish when you lift up the lid. There we go, last one done. Okay, that move all those scraps out of the way. We pop that down because I know a lot of you like to pause at this point just to make sure yours looks identical. So this is what you are getting. To fold this up, we are gonna use some fuse. And we're gonna put fuse on the underside of these four flaps. So just gonna put two, oh, two runs of fuse along each of these. Oh. I always think I've got the hang of fuse and then I come to do these videos and my flick just doesn't seem to work and I don't get a good run. There we go, that looks better to me. And then we are going to put a run of fuse along each of these flaps on the inside, okay? On the, the, the side that's facing down. So one. Need to get working on that flick again. Two, three, and four. Okay, fold our box up. These two flaps are just going to go in on each other like this. Perfect. And then we're just going to fold over these edge pieces like this. Okay. And can you see how that also gives you a really nice edge there when you are opening up the box? And it's just that little bit more strength than if we had just made a, a plain box without doing that fold over. Okay, so that's our box. So let's just put that to the side because we're not going to need that for a little bit longer. We're going to now work on our flap bit. Now, I have some mats of... Um, of my designer series paper. This is also from the Pretty Petals DSP stack and it has these lovely Calypso coral um, poppies that match my nails perfectly and then some old olive stems which is why we've used old olive for our base. Just going to quickly round off um, all four corners of this rectangular piece. Okay. And then the bottom two corners of this piece here. Now this flap is symmetrical at the moment, so it doesn't matter which side you stick it down to. I'm just going to use some snail. Give this quite a lot of snail. We are going to cut it out in a second and we want to make sure it sticks down. And then I'm just going to stick that onto one side. As I said, it is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which side you stick it down to at the moment. Then going to use my very pretty little butterfly from my bold butterfly framelit. I can grab him out. There we go, which is that lovely lacy butterfly framelit. And bring in my big shot. So let's make a bit of space. And I have this prepped already with my precision plate um, on the bottom. So this is the plate that makes it really nice to, and easy to cut out these intricate dies. And then what I'm going to do is lie on my um, piece of cardstock I've just been working on and I'm going to position my butterfly in the centre like that. Now this is going to cut through both, lay both the cardstock and the paper no problem. Bring in my um, top plate and then carefully wind that through the big shot. Okay, and I like to wind it through once and then back in the other direction. There we go. Pop that off and you can see that should then pop out perfectly. And our butterfly will also pop out of our die, she says, pretty easily as well. I'm just going to get the scoring tool back and that will help me to push out some of these holes. And my butterfly then pops out very easily as well. And I can just, if you wanted to use this for another card, 
we're not going to use it today you could keep that pull them all out and keep that to use on another project but that's our card with a hole nicely punched out of it I also have a piece here of got um, um, of old olive cardstock. This bit measures three by three square. And I'm just gonna again put that die in the center of that cardstock and roll that again through the big shot. Okay. Right, go all the way through and then come back. And that's all my die cutting done. So we can put the big shot out of the way for the moment. And this one, we are going to use both the relief here and then we are going to use our butterfly that we have punched out as well. So I'm just going to pop that out of the mould and you can see because we use the precision base bit how easily that comes out of the die. And just push out all of these holes so we get that lovely lacy butterfly effect. There we go. How about that? So as I said, we are going to use both of these pieces. So I bring my um, bit that we're working on back in first. I'm going to flip it over and I have here a piece of window sheet, if you can see that, that I've cut out and this measures two and a half by two and a half. And that is going to go over the back of our butterfly like that. Easiest way I find to stick this down is just to put some fuse around the perimeter. camera there sorry you didn't see that as well as I'd hoped and I'm just going to stick that behind my butterfly like that okay and then this little bit that I've cut out is going to stick over the top again and what that will do is just when you lift it up you won't see the, the um, backing sheet of the window sheet just makes it look a little bit prettier and the other thing we are going to do is we're going to use this bit to hide our ribbon as well because we don't want to put a closing ribbon over this section here otherwise you'd see that and I don't think that looks as nice. So I have some Calypso Coral seam binding ribbon. I'm going to cut off a little bit to begin with and this is going to go over the front like this. So I'm going to use a little bit of fuse to stick that down on this side. There we go, making sure that you can't see it through your window. And then on the other side, I'm going to use a longer bit and I'm going to go right across the middle of my box, like that. And again, stick that ribbon down on there and then cut off enough so you can tie a nice bow once we are built up. I'm going to bring in that little piece I mentioned and again, just some fuse or some snail. Snail would work just as well. Let's move to snail. Save the fuse and stick this back down. So make sure that you line it up to your butterfly hole that you have cut out. Okay, and that just gives you a nice neat finish on the inside of your box. We're now ready to stick our little box that we've made, made down. Let's put some decoration on that to begin with. And I have three little mats. These measure um, one and a quarter inch by two and three quarters of an inch. I will put all of these dimensions on my blog and you need three of those. Let's snail them up. And we're just going to put those onto three sides. Make sure you get your pattern obviously the right way up. and three. Pick the three sides that look the nicest if you have three that look better than the others. Okay so those are my sides on and we're going to stick this down and in this case I like to use tumble. So you're just going to put some tumble on the base and then on the side that we haven't got our DSP on as well. Okay. Somebody um, mentioned to me recently, they didn't realise that both ends of the tumble came off, but it does. So it just makes it a little bit quicker when you're putting glue on larger sections. And we are going to stick this just by eye, centrally. So if I turn it around this way, you can probably see that a bit better. Centrally, um, in this dimension, but then the back is going to go up against the score line that we have made. 
so that when we close this up, which we can do now, that goes flush against the, the back of your box and then let's give that a good press down. We can see how the lid then closes up nicely round it, just like that, okay? Last thing to do is stick down our little butterfly. I like, like to give it a little bit of a fold down the centre so that it gives it a bit more life and looks like it has just landed on there. And we're going to just stick this down. Just going to use a little bit of fuse. I would say use a glue dot, but I seem to have forgotten to bring those down as well. So a little bit of fuse on the back and we're just going to then stick that onto the centre of our window sheet. And we can fold up our wings so it looks like it's just landed and you can get that little sneak through the window sheet. Just to finish it off, I have some of these um, blossom accents. We're going to cheat a little bit because there isn't a Calypso Coral, but there is a Watermelon Wonder version which matches pretty closely. There's a little bit pinker, but I think when you add it onto the centre, you can't really see the, the difference there. So again, I'd say use a glue dot. I'm going to try and do this with snail as my glue dots have forgotten to come down as well. Snail's not going to work. Let's try some Tombow. Let's put a Tombow on the back of there and then just pop that down into the centre of our butterfly. Oh, now it's sticking to me rather than to the box. There we go. As we're using Tombow, let's just give that a second to dry. I like to add a little bit, a tiny little bling, and you can see that the smallest rhinestone that we do in the multi rhinestone pack fits set perfectly into the centre of our um, of our little flower. So let's try and drop this in and straighten that out. There we go. Okay, and then all that's left to do is to tie up our ribbon in a nice bow to keep our box shut. It is easier than I am perhaps making it look. Oh, bows and cameras, there's something about them that just means bows don't like to be filmed on camera. They're very shy, aren't they? So pull that into a nice bow. Trim off your tails. I'll tidy that up before I take the pictures. Um, yeah, it needs tidying up, doesn't it? But that is basically it, and those are our two beautiful little gift boxes, and I think they would go down really well with whoever you were giving them to, and hopefully there's a nice present inside as well for them to look forward to. Thanks for watching. If you would like to buy any Stamping Up products, it would be my pleasure to order them. Please do not get in, do not hesitate to get in touch. It would be my pleasure to order them. That's what I meant to say. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.